Okay, so we've got a question here. We need to find the residues of pi times the cosecant of pi z, all divided by z to the power of 6. And then also after that, we're going to define the singularities. Okay, so pi times cosecant pi times z over z to the 6. So looking for how to find the residues, first thing we need to find the singularities. So this here has a singularity at z equals zero. So just write that down. So at z equals zero, this function doesn't become it is no longer analytic. So if we want to find the residue of this, we can plug in zero into this here wherever we see a z. And maybe that's going to help us find the residues. But we've got a problem. We've got a zero here and the cosecant at zero is undefined as well. So that's also another singularity. So that gives us a bit of a problem. We can't do the normal rules for the residues. So what we can use is something called the Laurent series. So Laurent series. And what this means is we can find a Laurent series for this function and then what we're looking for is the coefficient for the 1 over z term. That's the term that we're going to be interested in. So how are we going to go about finding the Laurent series for that function? I don't know of any Taylor series or Laurent series for pi cosecant pi over z. So what we do know is that the Laurent series for co cosecant of z, so cosecant of z, this one has a Laurent series of 1 over z plus z over 6 plus z cubed over 360, and that's times 7, so that's our coefficient for that one, and then plus 31 over 15,120 z to the 5 and so on. So as we're looking for the z to the 6, I feel we're safe to stop at this term here. Right, OK. Now we've got a 1 over z term here and the coefficient of that is 1. But that's no good to us because we've got cosecant of pi z multiplied by pi. So let's plug the pi into our z here and see where that takes us. So the cosecant of pi z. So whenever we see a z now, we're going to plug in a, a multiple of pi as its coefficient. So then we get so 1 over pi z. So that will stay in the denominator. And then plus z over 6. So wherever we see a z, we plug in the pi z. So we've now got pi z over 6. Now this term here, we're going to need to be a little bit more careful. We've got the 7 over 360. That's fine. But we've got a z cubed. Now if our z is going to be now changed to pi z, we're now going to have pi cubed z cubed. That's going to be that term. And then for this term, very similar, just be careful with the z to the 5, but this coefficient will stay. And then z to the 5, just take this to the power of 5, which gives us pi to the 5, z to the 5. So basically our coefficient for these two terms and this one as well is pi over 6, 7 pi cubed over 360 and 31 pi to the 5 over 5120. That's our coefficients. Now I'm just going to put a little box around that just to keep it separate. OK. But now we're looking for the next part of this. We've got pi multiplying cosecant pi z. So now let's multiply through by pi. So pi 
cosecant pi z. So now that's going to give us pi over this one. That's just going to leave me now with 1 over z. Now I'm going to have to multiply all these terms by pi. So that's going to give us plus pi squared z over 6. So you can see I've distributed the pi into all the terms. So 7 pi to the 4 z cubed over 360 plus 31 pi to the 6 z to the 5 over 15 120. And of course we can still go on. Okay, so now the final bit we need to do is over z to the 6. So that's what we need to find the residue of that function there. Not this one, this one or this one. So now what we do now is take what we've got so far and divide it by z to the 6. So 1 over z divided by z to the 6. It's 1 over z to the 7. This one here. It's going to give us pi squared over 6. And then z divided by z to the 6 is going to give you z to the 5. It's this one here. 7 pi to the 4 over 360. That will stay. But I've got z cubed divided by z to the 6. That's going to give me z to the 3. And same here, write the coefficient in. 31 pi to the 6 over 15,120. And then z to the 5 divided by z to the 6 just gives me z. And that's going to give me just what I need now. Because now I've opened up what I can see is my residue. So remember we're looking for the coefficient for the term that's got 1 over z. So these are all z to the minus 7 minus 5 minus 3. This is z to the minus 1 which is what we want. So this here is going to be my coefficient. So therefore the residue of this that's going to give me 31 pi to the 6. divided by 15,120. Now we can plug that into our calculator and it's going to be just over 1.9. Okay, so that's the first part of the question taken care of. Now we need to define the singularities. So let's just do that. Okay, so let's find the singularities. So that's when this function here becomes non-analytic. So let's just see what we've got. We've got pi cosecant pi z over z to the 6. Now we've got a z to the 6 in the bottom. So at z equals naught, we have simple pole. But we have more than one because we have 6 solutions for this set so therefore we have pole of order six but look carefully at this function here we've got cosecant that doesn't complete our number of poles or singularities so the cosecant of pi z this is the same as one over sine of pi z now this is also at z equals zero. This will also give us one over zero, which is also undefined. So that gives us seven poles. So it's a pole now of order seven. So that's what we've got there, but we know there's more. There's also, we can also have, uh, z is also zero at pi as well. But if you plug in pi, pi to the 6, that gives us a value in our denominator that it doesn't give us a pole. So this function here, this gives us pole of order 7. 
Okay.